preview of our uh, foundation day we are in the series of uh, uh, expert lectures so a continuation of the uh, yesterday's lecture uh, today i welcome uh, mr anand chaturvedi for today's talk and uh, mr anand chaturvedi is graduated in civil engineering from jiit pune and he is studying uh, master's degree from iit kharagpur in civil engineering after that he has a good experience of working at various places including ws atkins uh, as a highway engineer and also teaching experience of gb pet uh, body as well as united sultanpur now he is working as a uh, highway engineer in wsp uh, noida so uh, once again i welcome you beyond behalf of triple mt family so stage is yours now please proceed Uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. Chauhan, for the very uh, wonderful uh, introduction. So I, I'll join. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chauhan, for your kind introduction. I welcome you all to the session of bridging the gap between industry and academia. A talk on sustainable highway design and tool used in an industry. So I thank you, Dr. Chauhan, all other dignitaries, head of department, and I welcome you all and all students to this session. Basically, uh, the main motive of this session is to bridging the gap between industry and academia, and knowing what actually industry is doing and what uh, we are uh, getting in our academics. Uh, uh, already, uh, Dr. Chauhan had introduced me. Just uh, I'll add that again. I'll reiterate that I have done my MTech from IIT Khadakpur, and the first I joined the organization uh, WS Atkins. I have a, a more than three and a half year of, of experience as an assistant professor. Later on, I thought that uh, since I was doing some consultancy and also I thought. That, Getting experience in industry is little rich, so uh, presently I'm here as a highway design engineer. Uh, I work for UK. Uh, WSP is a global company, uh, and uh, its name in India is WSP in India, and if it is a UK, its name is WSP in UK. So it has a worldwide office. Basically, this is a, a highway design consultancy. We have a multidisciplinary. Uh, Dr. Chauhan, uh, whether the session is recorded or not, if there is any facility or, or no worry, if it is not. Uh, you are on mute, yeah. Yeah, we are recording. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for that, yeah. So, uh, WSP is a uh, multi, it has a multidiscipline uh, department. We have it's around really more than 18 here. departments. Uh, uh, and uh, we have a very well specialized team. It's not only about highway, we have a structure team, we have the highway design team, we have geotechnical team. Uh, we have all the discipline of civil engineering team. Yeah, yeah, and in that. highway itself, uh, there is a well specialized team. So, Geometric so, design so, team is different. So, so, and so, then so, intelligent so, transport so, system so, team so, is so, different. So, Few people are working for a highway drainage. They are only working for a drainage. Few people, uh, there are a team who is working for road sign and marking. Uh, uh, another team is working for a geotechnical exploration and uh, getting the data of all the data from the UK and whatever reason we are working. In India, the people who are working in India, they are the integrated resource of the lead country for which they are doing. Let's say if I'm working for the UK region, so I would be known as ICRC, that is uh, Integrated Complementary Resource Center. So although we are sitting in India, but we are working for UK, uh, uh, we have a well sophisticated system where we can take control of their system from uh, sitting it, uh, here itself. We can see how the road is there and how is the slope and where drainage will go. So, uh, and uh, in India, uh, we have two offices one is Noida and one is Bangalore. The strength of Bangalore is around 1800 and uh, here strength in Noida is uh, around uh, uh, 900 something. Uh, 
so uh, maybe uh, i have made a slide for a corporate tour where uh, i'll uh, give a little feel to the audience particularly for the graduates so that they can understand that how offices looks like how is our work station and uh, what all things we work how many monitors we have how is our system that that okay, i'll come to the that, later right. I want it a two way communication Please session so if you have uh, any questions and uh, if you have uh, any query any opinion if you are agree with my thought or disagree with my opinions just let us know and this is how we both learn I wish I could have been there but it's a virtual talk so uh, uh, it has a little limitation but it still uh, will try our best so yahan data lagega yahan it also based on the audience how you are expecting just a demonstration of the software or you want a little understanding of highway as well so it's up to you how you prefer me to go that's how i'll go and uh, i welcome you all to this session why i am saying a talk on a sustainable highway design and tool use in this industry because there is a need of sustainability i'll just i'll go to my presentation then maybe i won't be able to see your faces but that is fine i'll just make a big screen let me know if my voice will drop or if my audio will not come to you i hope my screen is visible to all of you so sustainable urban transportation sustainable highway design and tool use in industry basically what i am going to deliver you as a little introduction of highway engineering then i'll demonstrate you the software civil 3d and if time allow i'll demonstrate the software of micro drainage which is a drainage design software uh, so why there is a need of sustainability because uh, uh, we are designing we have a code of a specific uh, code of all disciplines but still we are not producing a future ready design we are not producing a net zero design there is still some carbon emissions there is a lot of pollution let's say simple we are designing a road uh, uh, let's say we are designing a con concrete pavement but we know that production of one ton of cement wise traffic alignments uh, we have different travel demand forecasting model data collections of uh, the different demand like whether it is a home based trip or non home based trip accordingly we design our infrastructure uh, in geometric design uh, the element which we learn is a horizontal alignment vertical alignment cross sectional alignment radius Uh, super elevation traffic engineering is a uh, something where we uh, assist the operations of the traffic and the uh, traffic management signal coordination traffic data collection sign marking traffic flow uh, uh, we 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 normally uh, have a green shield models for the uh, relation between uh, uh, velocity uh, relation between speed of the vehicle density we understand the jam density and all then parking intersection in the pavement design we under uh, we study about the pavement material whether uh, flexible pavement or rigid pavement which one would be suitable and based on the uh, availability of the materials low locally availability of the material bituminous mix design and pavement rehabilitation and restoration in case uh, uh, if pavement has deteriorated in indian scenario we have code we have irc code irc 81 and irc 115 for the re, uh, rehabilitation we have irc 37 for the pavement design of the flexible pavement we have irc 58 uh, for the rigid pavement highway drainage is something which we don't bother very much in india unless it is a uh, unless it is a express way uh, but in uk they are very much bother about the uh, collection of storm water and discharging it to a particular water course 
so whether uh, uh, maybe next uh, 2025 20, minute my lecture would be little theoretical then we'll come to the demonstration and if you want i come to early itself so whether our transportation is really sustainable we can see a lot of congestions or there are a lot of emissions are there. We can see the visuals there is a safety stake, transportation safety. India is facing a lot uh, loss of around 600 billion a year due to congestion and slow speed of the free and uh, free and waiting time of at the toll plaza. Uh, although nowadays the waiting time of toll plaza had been a little reduced because of the fast tag. Uh, but recently, the Honorable Minister Gadkari has announced that they would be going to the another next advance, like there would be the GPS systems with that particular location and in the uh, vehicle itself, once vehicle will cross, the automatically uh, the money will deduct it from the account. That would be the next step of the fast track. India loses around 3% of GDP due to road accident every year. National GDP loss due to air pollution is around 10%. Uh, These are the data which are taken from the, this source. And uh, one more thing, uh, as per uh, recently I was uh, going through the uh, Environmental Protection Agency EPA report uh, from the USA, and more than 14% of the emission in the Greece, the greenhouse gases is only because of the transportation sector. Congestion because there is a drastic urban growth, there is a growth in a vehicle, there is a uh, growth in the private ownership because uh, most of the people, uh, we have a diverse country and we have different, different socio-economic characteristics. So everybody is trying to get their own vehicles so getting a own vehicle in Gorakhpur, in Azamgarh, in Varanasi is not very much uh, congestive. But if everybody would be having vehicle in the metropolitan cities, it creates a huge congestion. Even in the morning, whenever I travel to office, this half an hour uh, travel makes it one and a half hour. Roads are deteriorating, lack of road infrastructure and land use planning. Uh, we have seen few cities where land use planning has done very well and uh, their congestion is very less. Uh, recently, I have gone to the Chandigarh and Chandigarh is a very well designed city uh, considering all the discipline and there is a very less congestion. Sometimes long construction time and because of that, we create the temporary uh, uh, temporary roads and because of also there would be the uh, congestions, insufficient parking. We have emissions due to high congestions. We have poor inspection and maintenance program. Inspection and maintenance program is nothing but the pollution under control certifications. Even everybody is paying just 80 rupees or 100 rupees and getting their vehicle pollution under control certifications. So that that is again a big concern over quality and credibility of the AETCs, that is auto emission testing centers, poor vehicle management. There are many safety issues, lack of awareness among the people. So because of these things, we need a sustainable transport. From the conventional management, we need to uh, sit from the conventional traffic management to the technology driven traffic management and uh, whenever we are designing a road we are not we should not only concern about the uh, geometric design uh, of the road and pavement design of the road but we should also bother about the drainage characteristic because because of the improper drainage because of the improper layers uh, or drainage layer, there would be the lack in the durability. So, uh, uh, because whenever accident takes place, uh, uh, it's not only the fault of, of uh, uh, road, it's not only the uh, inconsistency in the design, but uh, a few research shows that 70% uh, 
uh, accident happened because of the driver fault and then maybe 5 to 10 percent because there is a lag in the uh, the metric design consistency and uh, uh, la uh, lack of road sign marking. So uh, our design should be such a way that even if driver uh, do uh, a little negligence, but still uh, the fatal error could be prevented. Let's say if, if you are uh, uh, giving the crash barrier just uh, be, uh, both side of the road. And if it is an intersection, at least uh, because of just a simple crash barrier, if there is a rolling crash barrier, and then even the driver will collide, but it will roll to uh, the another direction and accident can be prevented. So uh, I'll uh, not go much uh, about the uh, design perspective uh, uh, because I have uh, some uh, software which need to give demonstration. Uh, well, so profession of transportation engineering and project life cycle. First, we do planning and then preliminary design, detailed design, constructions, operations. So here, as we see in the planning, we have data analysis, forecasting, evaluation, design, geometric uh, design, pavement design, pavement design is just. Uh, uh, design pavement design is all about the design of the crust, the thickness of the each layer. That is the pavement design. But when we say the mixed design, it means how our top surface would be designed, how what would be the gradation of the uh, aggregate, what would be the optimum binder content. Drainage design is again. Uh, with, uh, I, I'll uh, if time will allow, I'll uh, show you a demonstration with the software. There should be proper drainage. There should be proper structural designing if, if it is a rigid pavement uh, for the work on a slab action. So there should be proper uh, design of the DLC layer as well as overlying layer. Construction stage, surface preparations, grading, pavement and bridges, traffic operations, traffic maintenance, intelligent transportations. Then, uh, Whatever road we design, like in India, we have Central Road Research Institute, CRRI, which is a, basically a technical and research arm, which produces the codes and work on a uh, research. So whatever road is being designed, it is expected if it is a national or a state highway or expressway, we should, uh, for next down the line 10 years, 15 years, we should record the data, like whatever design has been produced, how it is behaving, how is its functional perform, how its its structural perform. Accordingly, if, if there is any inadequacy and whatever we have intended that is not we are getting from road, then again there is a need of research and development and that's why code are getting revised recently. Our recent code is IRC 37 2018. Uh, mostly it is drafted by uh, Professor Reddy and Professor B. B. Pandey from the IT Khadakpur. Uh, uh, so, uh, why, if there was code IRC 2012, then why there is a need of 2018? Because uh, again, they must have thought that some more factors should be inclusion, maybe reliability factors of the 90%, 95%, maybe other factors. So, oh, well, so basically here I'm giving an industry presentation, so mo mo most of the things I cover from the industry, so software which we use in the industry, if it is a highway design, just I have noted down the software so that graduate can have some understanding or maybe you can make a note, even if uh, whenever recruitment is being done, what we expect a graduate is a learning ability. We know that what you have learned and what you are going to do, there would be little gap in that. So even let's say if it is a civil theory, even if you know basics of the civil theory, I think you would be treated as an outstanding student for the recruitment process because most of them don't even know the civil theory or uh, uh, maybe AutoCAD. AutoCAD is, of course, it is a drafting software, but civil theory is a design, design software. 
so so these are the uh, uh, highway design software civil 3d mx road open road nowadays mx road is little outdated now we have shifted towards ord that is open road designer and then latest one is a civil 3d autocad micro station both are the uh, drafting software with this micro drainage we do basically drainage design we fix the invert level of the pipe network and we check whether if there is any clashes with other utilities key line key sign software are the softwares for the road sign and road marking because in uk they are very much strict about the road sign and road marking particularly there is a tsrgd manual traffic sign regulatory and design guidelines is there so accordingly uh, that have around uh, five chapters and each chapter specify uh, different different signs uh, so uh, that is uh, done in uh, key sign and key line noa points civil 3d rail is used for the uh, rail uh, if you are working project for the rail design uh, like track designing noa point is again a digital uh, a tool project wise software where we update all the files and so that let's say for a particular project 10 people people are working so whatever i'll work i'll save on a project wise so it is a basically data sharing and data management software which people use if it is a structure team sap 2000 midab civil stat pro etab blue sas beam i'll give a few demonstration of the beam uh, beam is a building information modeling and uh, uh, since last 2 uh, 3 uh, years maybe since uh, 2019 onwards there is a huge demand of digital engineering and digital deliverable so lot of software we do have revit naviswork infraworks uh, so uh, all these softwares are used for the building information modeling well so demonstration of the autodesk civil 3d you you might be thinking that uh, this this is just a interface of the autocad but it has a different specialities because it work on a 3d model so uh, it, it 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 would be having surfaces it would be having profile so so these are the element which it would be having we'll see in the software just uh, i'll making you familiarize with these things so that it would be easier so uh, but but if if you have understanding of autocad then you can understand the civil 3d very easily so you can see th these are the menu bars we'll see in the software which uh, when i'll open these are the contextual ribbons uh, these are the menus uh, so if i have clicked home the contextual ribbons concerning with the home tab would be there if i have uh, clicked on the insert then another contextual menu would be there but the part which is very important in civil 3d is this tool space this is known as a tool space and it has a prospectus settings survey and toolbox prospector would be having few options like point point group surface feature line Uh, all the things which we'll see in our uh, presentation uh, first just i wanted to let you understand why there is a need of civil uh, civil 3d why why there is a need of civil 3d in highway design what is the capability of civil 3d so that you can have a little integrating uh, integrating uh, uh, integ integrating thinking to, to understand the civil 3d so you can see these are the all the uh, snapshot i have taken from the civil 3d uh, we we can design a road uh, in this way and uh, you you know this is a uh, nothing but we call it corridor basically uh, one alignment has been uh, created and then a corridor has been designed which which is consisting of uh, uh, width of each lane if it is a single lane or a double lane Uh, then uh, what would be the uh, width of uh, uh, hard shoulder or hard strip uh, all the uh, feature it would be uh, having once we'll define the uh, assembly how the cross section of road should be 
then accordingly we can create a corridor. We'll create one corridor in our civil feeding in the software. So, so you know, uh, what, what is this? This one is nothing but contour. Uh, so whenever we design a project, first, uh, whatever the study area we do have, we, uh, we send a surveyor uh, using a total station and many other advanced met uh, methods nowadays we do have and they create a survey and they give us a surface. Basically, these are the contours by using which uh, we can understand that from where uh, the water will, will flow uh, or from where our center line should go and so, so basically this topographical survey in this way is our whole uh, topography on our screen. So by sitting in a AC chamber, we can design a pavement once we have a survey and if we have a center line. And center, there is also a specific method for designing a center line. It's uh, not uh, like uh, in India that if some politician is saying that uh, this road should be uh, going uh, through my home, then uh, alignment should be there. Proper study uh, through the planning team is done in terms of origin and destination. We study, we create a origin and destination map. We, we understand the traffic characteristic and its, its growth rate. We also understand the topography. That's why you must have understand those who have undertaken the classes of the, uh, the this highway engineering. There are survey, uh, uh, planning survey, reconnaissance survey, map study, detail survey. So, so from here we get all those information. Here also we can see the contours, and uh, this is uh, a very typical uh, uh, and uh, little curvy uh, road, uh, maybe uh, in a little hilly, hilly areas. Uh, these are the some interfaces of the civil 3D. Here we have an assembly, how we have created, uh, we, have, we have profiled. Just a second. You see here, I haven't discussed. Here actually a profile has been created, a vertical profile. Uh, that, that we'll see in our, our uh, software. So, so basically, uh, uh, in a drawing, what all things a contractor is needed? Basically, it, the contractor wants a plan like how the road is going, what is its benchmark, what is its elevation. So its vertical profile can be get from this profile and plan can be get from the here. But this profile is for the whole stretch. So for every 10 meter, how our profile would be there, then we create this section for every 10 meter. That's why, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, profile is there. Uh, this is in a very small uh, graphic. So, basically, uh, like whenever we are creating a road, whenever you, uh, uh, whenever few labors are going on a site and making a road, what all things they need it. That's what we want in a software itself. Designing a road, what all things we need. Of course, we need a surface. Then uh, we need like through which way road is going, uh, what are the points and its elevation. So in civil 3D also, we need the point or maybe group of point or it's simply uh, we have got the group point or group of point. We can create a surface or sometime we directly get the surface. Then we create a center line and we create a profile like how uh, uh, how it would be uh, going its vertical profile. We create an assembly how our craft section will lo look like. Then we create a corridor. A drawing will also consist of uh, pond, ditches, pipe network and the data set code for the, some uh, data sharing tool. Uh, in WSP, we have a specific uh, 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 this folder management, just I have taken snapshot so that once you come to industry, you should know like what uh, this folder have a specific meaning. Like if there is a communication between India and the lead country, every mail and everything would be in communication um, basically for the project uh, management uh, perspective. 
and then uh, again this this would uh, consist of some kick off meeting and whatever update in the drawing will be doing that would be in the work in progress file and uh, uh, it would again having many uh, sub sub folders and if there is any risk associated with design uh, that, that also need uh, to be uh, carried out like like in um, uk they are very much bother about uh, like uh, if you are cutting a road if you are you have fixed alignment uh, where a uh, lot of row, uh, uh, trees are uh, coming in between you are not allowed to cut those tree although you can change your alignment or even if there is a very much restrictions uh, uh, then uh, what you need to do whatever tree you are cutting you should make a uh, uh, list of those trees that what was the age of those tree and then somewhere you again need to resapling the trees because of environmental impact just i wanted to have a uh, give you a look of the drawing you know let's say if, if uh, it is a drawing uh, it is consisting of uh, the uh, layout of the road uh, with its uh, shoulder its lane we have different ponds as well in in the our drying where the water the surface water would be going and uh, you can see here we have the uh, all the topographical survey so uh, this is how our drying is look like and uh, so okay so before giving you some demonstration of uh, this beam just just uh, i would like to start the civil 3d software and uh, let's do something in civil 3d now so dr chauhan let me know if the screen of this software is visible yes sir it, it is visible here okay 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 all right so uh, well so even uh, if you would be having uh, for, this is for the graduate which i am telling even if you have a basic understanding of the civil 3d then coming in industry in the design industry particularly uh, would be little easier for you even if an interviewer is asking you what is the capability of civil 3d how it is different from the autocad and what all things we do whether we create any profile even if you know a little bit of it i would say that it would be easier for you so whatever here i'm going to show today uh, in a civil 3d uh, of course uh, uh, understanding whole civil 3d requires around 30 lecture but here i am not going to show you details of each one but i'll just give you brief intro so that you can get to know what all things is done in civil 3d and later on you can explore by your own okay so we we said these are the menu uh, these these are the you know uh, this tool space is very important many time uh, uh, you would be uh, uh, requiring the uh, menu of these so point is nothing but a point in uh, autocad but when you uh, uh, give a point uh, let's say i'm giving a command point specify a point it will ask and a point has been created if we check its property there is a x and y coordinate but but there is a no no um, Set coordinate because it is a simple point, but in civil 3D, uh, whenever uh, we 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 would be having data, we would be having either 3D point where you would be having x y coordinate as well as its elevation, its z value as well. So how point in the AutoCAD and civil 3D is different? because in civil 3d we have only coordinate x and y coordinate and there would be a point but the point in civil 3d is a civil 3d point and that is known as cogo point because it would be having coordinate as well as 
geodetic uh, uh, and uh, its elevation as well. So it would be having x, y, and z coordinate as well. So uh, I have made a single point. I can create many points uh, with its uh, uh, elevation value, and then I can create a group of points and creating a surface. Why we are creating a surface? Because on a surface only we can create the alignment. Like in a constructions, on a, if there would be earth, then only you can create alignment. You cannot create alignment on air. Same, simulating the same thing on a software, you need a surface. So then either you would be getting the data in the CSV or Excel sheet where uh, you would be having, let's say, a surveyor has given a 10,000 points and each point would be having its uh, x and y coordinate as well as its elevation. From that, you can create a surface or finally you can get a surface. So, so uh, surface will come here, alignment would be here, and then catchment area, pipe network. Just uh, let's, uh, let, let me insert a surface over here, just for the sake of I hope my screen is visible and my software is visible here. Well, ah, yeah, uh, okay. I'll just insert here. Uh, let me know whenever my voice get dropped. I'll just insert a surface. I already have a surface by the surveyor, so I just go to the insert menu and uh, I'll insert a land XML file of the surface somewhere I have saved. Yes, I have uh, land XML file of this surface. This is just I'll uh, use that particular surface. So this is the triangulation of the surface. Uh, well, so this is the surface. Surface is nothing but this is the whole ground which was there. Surveyor has done the survey and it, is, it has uh, given to me. And now I can have a whole idea of this surface. What all information are there? <coughs> we can change its style. It is a triangulation, or uh, we can uh, change uh, its style only border only, uh, or maybe uh, we can have some contour type of things uh, where we would be having some contours. Uh, we can see that we have contours of this as well. Just allow me for a second. Uh, there is some issue with mouse. Just I'll be back with 30 seconds. working but it's uh, middle button rolling was a little difficult so I had some difficulty in
beautiful or not, I'll just make more details soon. And you will understand. You see here in a round table. And uh, uh, we have to, uh, we had just switched off the flow, I know, and we have particular idea about drainage engineer will be going to propose a pipe. So they would be having clear understanding where pipe should go. Just, just concentrate on this area. You can see that from this middle, some water is going towards this way and some is coming this way. So it is obvious that one pipe would be proposed somewhere here and another would be somewhere here. So, so, so just, uh, and we can do water drop analysis as well. Anywhere I can drop the water and we can check where it is going. Just, just uh, I'm uh, moving ahead one by one. So these are the controls you can see. Uh, I'll move my cursor over here. Its elevation is how much? 39.018, uh, uh, if you see correctly, uh, on the deal surface. And uh, this one is, uh, if we uh, check another one, is, it is 46. So, so by this, we, we, we can see that surface is draining uh, up, uh, upwards. It's like from south to north. Uh, we, we can have a 3D, 3D look of this surface. Let's have a, a little look of this uh, surface. We, we have object viewer. It will come, it will take little time. Doing on a civil CD file is very big, it, it, it sometimes requires a little time. So just bear with me.
uh, Anand, your software is uh, too much lagging. I think uh, you can proceed, proceed for the next uh, section of today's talk. That will be good for us. Okay, just I wanted to show you the uh, design. But yes, of course, because it, it, the file is big, big, heavy. So yeah, I understand this point. Yeah, so it, it will lag a little bit. Yeah, so anyway, uh, just, just I'll, I'll try once again. So, you know, here alignment has been created uh, with a 50 uh, meter CNS interval. Uh, uh, let me know if uh, you can see. I hope you can see. Of course, it will lag a little bit because uh, there will be uh, some heavy transmission file is there. So, uh, so from uh, uh, what is the length of this alignment as a 50 interval, it's the whole length I can see from the here. Uh, and it is a uh, 1969 meter uh, with a 50 uh, 50 meter interval channels uh, this is just the center line now what I'll do I'll just quickly create a profile of this how this alignment is uh, looking like so uh, I'm selecting this alignment and this is my design surface and I'll quickly create a profile of this alignment I'll quickly create the profile and uh, we, we can give any elevation height particularly since it is in between 71 to 93 that's why it is minimum and maximum so uh, just I'll create a profile and I'll put it somewhere here so so what is this profile this profile is nothing but whatever alignment you have created over here whatever alignment you have created over here, you can see here is the horizontal curve. Uh, how it is going vertically, this is the profile of the vertical vertical uh, design surface. So you know, you know vertically it is going uh, very zigzag. Uh, so you, you know at every challenge of 50 or maybe at interval of 10, it is a very zigzag. So this is the existing profile. So do you really want your road your road in this way? Of course not. So then, then what you will do? What you will do? You will create a design profile. You will create a design profile through the uh, profile creation tool, and uh, just select it. Uh, it could be same as you want in your uh, in your design profile. So, uh, just, just a second, uh, okay, profile, from profile creation tool, you will select the profile view and uh, you, uh, all this style would be almost same and you will create a design profile how you want your road. So, uh, I am taking this curve and the linear one. So, this is my road. Once I got to know that this is how it is behaving, so maybe I would like to drop my profile in very straight or little, uh, there could be very little uh, uh, deviation. So somewhere it would be cutting, somewhere it would be filling. So, so likewise, uh, we can also calculate the volume of cutting and filling. this profile has created uh, uh, it has a, uh, let's say here we have very very flat profile and here we have some ups and down uh, little uh, uh, little slope but uh, this is a whatever profile you want that you can uh, create now now what you would be creating you would be just quickly creating an assembly how you want your uh, road cross sections so just I'm um, very quickly I'm um, creating an assembly 
So what all things should be there in your assembly would be, there are so many uh, one lane, two lane, uh, some DMRB uh, standard of the dual lane. Uh, I'll just go with a very basic lane and I'll uh, just create a very simple uh, single lane. Whether it's something visible or it is it's still lagging. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it is so lag in the software itself. Working on civil CD requires little patience because uh, it has a heavy file, so every time it, it, it gets it stuck. I, un I wanted to do is just a profile. It's not taking because of some lag. Can you proceed it because it's lagging and uh, yeah. Okay, me meanwhile, I'll open uh, maybe at the end of uh, the session. Meanwhile, uh, just I'll say, uh, go ahead with the presentation. लैग कर रहा है तो सॉफ्टवेयर थोड़ा ये लैग करता है मैं प्रेजेंटेशन से ही कुछ बता देता हूँ सॉफ्टवेयर थोड़ा सा लैग करेगा हाँ प्रेजेंट क्या आप आया सो Basically, what uh, what I was trying to do, I was just trying to design this all these things uh, uh, to you. But uh, I think there is a lag in the software, and uh, that's why uh, there is a lag in the transmission as well. Uh, so yes, I have covered this. Uh, just I wanted to give the demonstration of BIM because now uh, this is the era of digital engineering, and uh, finally I give you demonstration of uh, IIT BIM. I hope the, that will work. So uh, before IIT uh, I'll just give you a typical uh, cross section of a payment. So BIM, what is actually BIM? So it is basically building information modeling. So building information modeling is a broad term that describes the process of it specifying, creating, and managing digital information about the build assets such as the building bridges, highways, and tunnel. And nowadays, it, it is a mandatory in the UK to, uh, including your drawing, there should be digital deliverables so that they can visualize the whole thing. And it is the requirement of everybody. If there is a home construction, people want to visualize before its construction. If it is a road construction from any highway agency, uh, the both is all the involved stakeholders wants to visualize it. Uh, the person there uh, who is involved in land acquisitions and if their land is going, they want to see that if it is affecting their societies or not. The agencies also uh, want to visualize, and it is not only about the visualization, but we use in a design uh, as well to check the design that if there is a road surface and manhole chamber, whether the chamber of manhole is such a way that it is coming out of the road. So earlier we had a 2D, that is AutoCAD micro station, 
Later on, we shifted to the 3D. Now we are shifting to the BIM. Although we have design as well as digital delivery. So we can see here the, some uh, software. It is done in some software. This is Navis Work Class Detection. So this is a project of uh, NARF, uh, basically uh, Shropshire County Council. Uh, County Council is uh, just like a state uh, uh, we have in India, like you know, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh. So, like you know, the uh, United Kingdom, they have different different county council, Shropshire uh, County Council, North Fork Yorkshire County Council. So, this was a project uh, from the Shropshire County Council, and this is a greenfield project I have worked in Sibari Northwest Relief Road. Around uh, it was a space of eight kilometers. So you know this is a German port roundabout, and uh, there are a lot of utilities. Uh, although we had designed a road, we have given a our pipe network to collect the surface water. But there were some existing gas pipeline. There were some fewer utilities. So that's why we do a survey that is called a GPR survey, ground penetrating radar survey, where uh, we. Uh, uh, we assess the invert level and levels of the, all the utilities which is inside the ground. So, so you know, uh, like it, in the starting, I have discussed that we need topography. So, only topographical survey is not important, but uh, somewhere at a critical location or built-up area, we require the GPR survey as well to understand. Let's say already there is a gas pipeline because in UK gas pipeline are, are in uh, come through the pipe. So uh, in India as well, uh, in different different societies, we have through the pipe. So if uh, there is already a pipe, so designers should design its level if there is a pond or access track by considering those levels. So that's why we need uh, to uh, GPR survey and then we can model in our Navis work and we can see if there is any class detection. And if you user can also visualize we can see uh, this is a piece. Uh, so, so like uh, uh, you know uh, that after the design phase, there is a construction phase and quality control. So, if already we have produced a digital deliverable, then up to a certain extent before construction, sometimes if problem will arises during the construction stage, that we can assess at an earlier stage as well. So, so that's why uh, the Building information modeling has come into the picture. Uh, we can uh, see that a demonstration of software requires a lot of time for novice work. So maybe uh, someday else we can talk. But uh, uh, we have created model of even reinforcement itself, class detection, reinforcement verification, some buried services detection. So uh, through the uh, taking the input from the GPR data, we can. Uh, produce this type of model and we can assess in front of our eyes. Look at this. Uh, you might be thinking that this is a photograph, but this is a uh, real-time uh, design of a project. So, so you know, uh, if uh, as in the starting itself, I have told that many teams work on a certain project. Let's say highway design team design this highway and whatever surface it has in its profile, it has been designed, but then drainage engineer has come, and he need to propose. He or she need to propose the this chamber, this pipe network, utility network. So for that, he requires the surface of this. But finally, after this design, if uh, to understand that there won't be any problem during the construction stage, it is good good to produce the digital derivable like this. Here we can see that chambers and pipes are connecting gas pipeline so uh, so that's why again digital deliverable you can see here whole lane is visualized it's a central median and other uh, features we can see so so all these things is done in navis work infra work uh, let's say uh, uh, this is a chamber and the top portion is known as its cover level Let's say the level of this one is 80 meter above datum, and this one is 82, because both are the independent designer. This was the drainage engineer. This was the highway engineer. 
then how we can understand once we will produce this type of things and we will see that this amber is coming out of this growth then later on we can change the design before going in uh, to the construction stage so that's what all about beam these are the pipe network well so like uh, we india uh, just i'll give the quick demonstration of different different thing like we india we work on a uh if we talk about the highway we work on a irc port and uh, then uh, for i uh, is port for the uh, design of uh, rcc and all uh, so likewise in uk they have design manuals of road and bridge so you know during the uh, these are the you know this is the foreign mnc's so they want a little experience of these coded codes as well so if you are applying for like atkins wsc global or maybe zappo so uh, at least it is required that you can say that i know dmrb standard as well so you can go to the dmrb site just type in the google dmrb code and it will go to this standard of highway.co.uk.e and it uh, like we have india we have code of different different discipline so in uk they have dmrb code design manuals of road and bridge so they have code for the general uh, principles some sustainability and environment then road layout where uh, the highway uh, uh, design comes pavement design has a specific set of codes then bridges drainage has a specific set of codes geotechnical exploration has uh, road sign marking has a special code so just if you are applying these mnc just be familiar little with uh, your dmrb code uh, this is just for a graduates uh, are, uh, who are attending the session it has different different series let's say uh, uh, there is a code of determination of pipe and bedding combinations for drainage work it is a cd533 why cd53 its name is cd533 there is a special reason for that also because you know we have this code matrix where each part has been divided uh, on x axis and volume or life cycle y axis let's say if something is a very general principle design code and uh, uh, it it has a general information so it would be gg uh, let's say why it is a cd uh, cd 533 it's only because Uh, 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 533 means it is coming to this means the series 500 which is going from 500 to 600 is all about drainage code so that's why and c for it belongs to civil and d for it is a design related okay if if a code would be something like some inspection and assessment appraisal then it would be cs or cm likewise we have different different codes so these are just Uh, you can go uh, through and understand the codes. Uh, the, these are few highway design uh, things which I wanted to give you a brief. But before that, I'll uh, just come to the uh, IIT pave. And before coming to the IIT pave, just I'll give a demonstration of the uh, road. Uh, it's uh, cross sections. Uh, of course, some of you have gone through the um, uh, uh, highway. Uh, 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 highway subject highway engineering subject so you can understand the typical cross section of a flex the flexible pavement looks like something like this top two courses are known as the uh, bituminous so these surface course and binder course are made of the bituminous mix and then we have base course we have sub base course and then we have compacted sub grade somebody in uh, in your interview can ask just to uh, draw a typical cross section of the road so you should be familiar with this thing at the very top there is a seal code because once pavement has been constructed it should be sealed so that there won't be any uh, um, intrusion of the very much uh, uh, any foreign element of water Uh, this top surface is designed in two way uh, one is the surface course and this binder course can be uh, dpm dense bituminous macadam then base course uh, would be your base and uh, sub base these two uh, 
layers can be uh, cement treated that is known as CTB based or no, uh, that is known as bound layer as well and if it is not a cement treated it is known as granular layer. So if base and sub base is a bound layer means it is a cement treated CTB based that we call and if it is a not a cement treated then it is just a GSP layer that is uh, granular sub base layer. So uh, uh, we have a um, uh, in flexible pavement design. We know that flexible pavement design. Uh, we understand that it works on a grain to grain distribution, and in uh, rigid pavement, it works on a uh, slab action. That can be also asked this question. So uh, we have different different multi layer elast elastic theory, and each layer has a modulus of elasticity. And uh, then underlying layer has a, uh, uh, again modulus of elasticity, but of course it is very obvious that top layers modulus of elasticity would be little higher. Let's say if uh, this one is a 3000 kempa, then second layer would be maybe 1000 kempa or so, and then uh, subgrade would be 300 uh, megapascal or so. We have this poisons ratio and we have uh, thickness of each layer. That's what we design as per IRC 37. Today I did not get time to explain IRC 37. But designing of pavement means designing of different different layer by considering the design parameters. So those design parameters are very important and design parameters are your traffic volume, your subgrade condition, your CDR condition, your temperature because this design which is preferable in Chennai may not be suitable for the uh, Kashmir because of the variation in the temperature. But quickly understand what is the two stresses which we consider in our IRC 37. So uh, let's say if it is a uh, dual wheel configuration, so loads will be applying here and we know a standard axle load is 80 kilo newton. So at this both field around 40 kilo newton will uh, come and for a particular a wheel it will come 20 kilo newton. So what is two points of the critical stresses are the bottom of this top layer and top of this bottom layer. Means uh, you know when load will be applying to the wheel there would be tensile strain that will develop and tensile stress uh, would be there. So that tensile let's say epsilon T that will develop to this portion and the vertical compressive stress will develop at the subgrade. So that's why whenever rutting occurs, you know that these are the rutting, wheel is applying the load. Rutting can occur in two ways. Either it has uh, just depressed the top layer because of inadequate compaction uh, and then it will go to the underlying layer. That is known as top down tracking that we call TDC. And if there is a depression in the subgrade, then it will come to the subsequent layer that is known as bottom of cracking, bottom up cracking that is known as BUC. So TDC and BUC. So uh, uh, what data we enter in IDP software, it is a software for the pavement analysis. Because you know pavement design is nothing but a pavement analysis. We, under, we calculate the uh, design traffic we calculate the critical strain and then uh, uh, whatever strain is coming whether we'll check that whether it is beyond the critical strain or not well so uh, uh, this is the interface of the uh, software uh, if it is a let's say i'm assuming that our payment is three layer system so in each layer we will just give the demo uh, uh, just models of elasticity of each layer and just uh, you will uh, give the this uh, thickness of each layer and then you will calculate the stresses manually it would be very difficult for you to calculate the stresses but by use of this software you can calculate the stresses and um, uh, once you will give this information you will uh, give click the submit button uh, it will uh, uh, data will be submitted and finally report will be generated where you will get this epsilon value and uh, epsilon z value, basically the compressive strain uh, and the 
uh, ten side strain. Basically, the strain this one and this one. So let without any delay, let's open the IIT Bhip application. It is just the application software. And uh, if if you want, I can share it, uh, the application with Professor Chauhan as well, so that later on you can have a demonstration by your own. Uh, let me let me very quickly open. Whether my screen is visible, uh, I think it should be visible. Let me check here. It is visible, sir. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, uh, well, so for running this uh, uh, IIT PIP application, I, I would not say it's uh, a software. I would say it's application because it is a .NET based application and it is just the application. So first you, uh, sometimes uh, you are having IIT PIP and you are running and it is not running. Why? Because .NET is not installed in your system. So first you should install the .NET. Let, yeah, so uh, just I have uh, opened this and this is the interface. You can have a look. If, if I have the existing file, I will click over here. Otherwise, if I'm going to design new payment section, I'll click over here. Once you click here, it will ask you uh, that what would be the layer. Layer can be multiple layer. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, put it side by side so that I can get the data. Uh, well, so uh, yeah. So it will ask you how many number of layer you want to add. So let's say we have a three layer. So we we have three layer. So it will ask the modulus of elasticity, and you will be already having the modulus of elasticity. If you want, sir, how modulus of elasticity is calculated? Then again. For that, we need to go back to IRC 37 and there is a specific process. We have the VR value and uh, then uh, by that, uh, we calculate the modulus of elasticity uh, or when we are, we are going to design a new payment. But uh, when it is a, uh, already there is a design payment and we are uh, going to rehabilitation or overlay design, then uh, by using the polyweight deflectometer, uh, we'll get the deflection and then uh, there is a back calculation software that is also KDP back that is also developed by IIT Kharagpur, and from there we we, under, we can assess the uh, elastic modulus E1, E2, and E3. Let me just enter this value. So, what you want uh, the top layers modulus of elasticity? It should be a little practical. Okay, I, I'm not there, so maybe I'm not asking any of you. Just I'll enter if, if any value. Let's say 3,000. It should be rationally entered. It's not like you have entered this 200 and this one 3,000. Why? Because you know that underlying layer have a little inferior material. So it should have uh, less modulus of elasticity. So what modulus of elasticity we do have so that we can just verify. We have 3,450 and 70. 3,450 and 75. Thus, I would request for the graduate, like you should understand this thing very properly because even up to a MTech level, we don't understand these things. Uh, so, uh, uh, well, uh, poisons ratio, uh, it is a material specific. Uh, so, just uh, uh, in case of road, just let me take it. 0.35, uh, we can take 0.4 as well. You might be knowing the phenomena of Poisson's ratio, lateral and longitudinal expansion, and uh, uh, this is 0.35. What was our thickness? We can take any thickness, but what you feel suitable. So would you like to give me any thickness, or just I enter uh, any thickness, whatever I have seen? Let, let's say the thickness H1 is 140 and then 500. 140 and this one is the 
डिजाइन और कुछ हो तो इसको कैसे हम लोग रिजोल्व करेंगे हमने कोर्ट को फॉलो करते हुए जोमेट्रिक डिजाइन किया जब ये दो डिजाइन हो जाएगी तब हम ड्रेनेज की डिजाइन करेंगे और उसमें इन दो डिजाइन का कहाँ पे लेआउट है कहाँ पे एक्सेस ट्रैक है उसके अकॉर्डिंगली हम पाइप का डिजाइन करेंगे कभी कभी ऐसा होता है कि कुछ यूटिलिटीज से क्लैश करता है तो हमें प्रॉपर कवर डेप्थ नहीं मिलता है लेट से पाइप को लगभग पॉइंट नाइन मीटर नीचे होना चाहिए अदरवाइज ट्रैफिक लोडिंग की वजह से वो क्रैश हो जाएगा क्योंकि हम किसी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को नेक्स्ट फिफ्टी ईयर में डिजाइन करते हैं उस कंडीशन में फिर हम रिकमेंड करेंगे डोमेस्टिक डिजाइनर को कि आप अपने सर्फिस का लेवल थोड़ा ऊंचा करिए क्योंकि हम अगर ग्रेविटी फ्लो करा रहे हैं तो हमें वो इन्वर्ट लेवल जो दे रहे हैं उसमें हमें प्रॉपर कवर डेप नहीं मिल रही है इसलिए हम हाईवे का सर्फेस यूज करके ही अभी हमने आपको माइक्रो ड्रेनेज सॉफ्टवेयर का डिमॉन्स्ट्रेशन नहीं दिया उसमें एक्जैक्टली हम हाईवे का सर्फेस यूज करके हर एक पाइप का शेड्यूल हम दिखाते हैं कि किस पाइप का इन इन्वर्ट लेवल क्या होगा आउट इन्वर्ट लेवल क्या होगा चैम्बर है तो चैम्बर का डायमीटर क्या होगा उसकी हाइट क्या होगी ये सारी चीजें निर्धारित करते हैं और इसके पहले जियो टेक्निकल और इकोलॉजिकल ऑस्पेक्ट ये चीजें देख लेते हैं जियो टेक्निकल एक्सप्लोरेशन होता है ड्रेनेज इज नॉट ओनली अबाउट पाइप जो रोके में ड्रेनेज करते हैं दे ओनली बॉर्डर अबाउट कलेक्टिंग द वॉटर रिड्यूसिंग द पॉल्यूशन ट्राइंग टू इन्फिल्ट्रेट इन टू द ग्राउंड तो जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग उसका इन्फिल्ट्रेशन कैपेसिटी चेक करेगी उसके बाद जो बचेगा वो किसी वाटर कोर्स में डिस्चार्ज करेंगे मे बी रिवर स्ट्रीम में या जो भी